Hello and welcome to Westminster Online. It is wonderful to have you be part of our community. Today is Ash Wednesday, and so uh, our service is different this year, but uh, it will still be good for us to prepare our hearts, minds, and souls for Easter. To do so, you will need a few things. Uh, two pieces of paper. Uh, one piece of paper is going to be burned or torn up, whichever you prefer. Um, we will be burning as we do have been doing for many years now on Ash Wednesday. But if you don't want to do that in your home, just be prepared to tear, tear that piece of paper up into as small pieces you can get and then something to dispose it into. Um, also, we would recommend that uh, you have uh, a post-it note because you're going to have, Lent means doing something. And if you have a post-it note, you can put it someplace where you will see it every day for the next 40 days and six Sundays until we celebrate Easter to remind yourself to, to, to do something. It's your spiritual discipline. Lastly, um, since we won't have ashes, um, we will be doing anointing. And so if you have, um, if you have anointing oil at your house, wonderful. If you have the balm of healing, great. Um, most people don't. Um, but I'll bet you do have either some sort of hand lotion or Vaseline or even olive oil. All these things are based on olive oil. So find one of those and, and we'll be using that later in the service. Loved ones, let us prepare ourselves to worship God. Psalm is Psalm 51, select verses. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing heart. Let us pray. Gracious God, out of your love and mercy, you have breathed into dust the breath of life, creating us to serve you and neighbors. We ask for your presence with us now. Call forth our prayers and acts of tenderness and strengthen us to face our mortality that we may reach with confidence for your mercy. In Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our gospel lesson comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 28 to 34. And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? 
Therefore, do not worry, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry for tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries in its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. We have been on a very long journey since last we gathered on Ash Wednesday. To not be together on this important night that marks the beginning of the sober season of land is one more loss among so many losses. We have experienced months of, of closed doors, the end of plans we counted on, the shutting down of what we had taken for granted. In California, one out of every thousand people has died. Last month, January, had the highest death toll in our country since the pandemic started. As, as, as fatigued as we are, this is not over. With this much loss and sadness, it is hard to embrace a season of giving something up, of letting a bad habit go in order to embrace a new discipline. So let's look at these next six weeks as we embark on a closer walk with Jesus. In the second chapter of Genesis, God makes man from dust. He molds him from the dust of the ground then breathes into his nostrils the breath of life. We are told in scripture that we are dust and that to dust we will return. In fact, we are dust because we are made of the basic elements of earth. And the earth is made from the explosion of the first star at the beginning of time. That means we are both dust and stardust. God's creation is both dust, that is physical, and stardust, that is spiritual. We know that the physical life does not replace the spiritual life. We have seen the mess people make of their lives when they try to focus only on the physical. Rather, the spiritual lifts up the physical and reclaims it for its true purpose. We are meant to worship God. When Jesus accepted human form and walked among us, God made clear that this earthly life is not all there is. We have a spiritual calling placed on our lives. In this season of Lent, we are challenged to affirm that deep truth, that greater reality. Yes, we are dust, but we are also stardust. So this Ash Wednesday, this season of Lent, let's be kind to ourselves. We know that over these months of isolation, we have picked up poor spiritual habits that separate us from God and from one another. We know there are many places and ways for us to draw closer to our Savior, Jesus Christ. Drawing closer to Jesus is a pleasant thing, a good thing. The Holy Spirit is here to help and guide us over these next weeks. Let us embrace these 40 days as the gift they are to release the weight of dust for the lightness of stardust.
Lent is a season where we always give up something. So often it is something that is irrelevant. Maybe something that we like or enjoy, but it doesn't really change our lives. The season of Lent is supposed to make it, to make us closer to Christ's call, closer to the, the people we believe we were called to be. What is keeping you from that? I encourage you now to take a piece of paper and write that down. And then we will, get, we will dispose of it. Friends, all these things that we have written down are the barriers in our lives and in our faith to becoming the disciples Christ created us to be. So if you choose to burn, now is the time to light those pieces of paper and to put them into a suitable place. These that I'm burning in here are the palms from last Palm Sunday. The people welcomed Jesus and then a week later forgot exactly who he was. The palms remind us that Jesus knows us as we are, loves us, and wants us to be whole and part of him. That which separated you is gone. You have been restored. Thanks be to God. Friends, please join with me in this time of reflection as we have removed those parts of ourselves that we may become different people. From dust you were formed. God fashioned you and breathed life into you. God breathes life into you now. Sense your breathing and the presence of God filling you. Sense a deep longing to experience God's presence. On Ash Wednesday, we remember Jesus. We have come willing to journey into the wilderness with him, seeking the truth about ourselves humbly preparing for renewal of our discipleship, committing ourselves again to be disciples of Jesus. Examine your heart. Examine your behavior. Examine your commitment. 
Are you willing to prepare yourself, your life, for acceptable service? As a person cleans house to prepare for an honored guest, now create a clean heart and renew your spirit to welcome God's presence. Breathe in me, breath of God. Breathe in me, your new life. We have opened ourselves to the presence of God. Following that guidance, we have given up something that has, that has blocked us, that has separated us from God and from one another. And now we have an opportunity to pick something up. What is the grace note that you need to add to your life during these 40 days? We uh, are using, Twine and I are using post-it notes. When we write on these little purple sheets, we can post them someplace where we'll be able to see them every day. Be it a bathroom uh, mirror, a picture on a wall near our bed, wherever we need it to be, we can place it. So take a few mom moments and think about what God is calling, what blessing God wants to give to you over these next 40 days. I read recently that in a traditional Ash Wednesday uh, service, we talk about the imposition of ashes. It, it, in other words, the ashes, the confession, the, the burden is imposed on us. Um, it's placed on us by someone like us or someone around you. Today, we want you to do something different. You have an oil or a lotion prepared. Take that oil and make the mark of the cross yourself. Let it show your willingness to go on this journey guided by the Holy Spirit to make this a Lent that truly prepares your hearts and your lives for the coming of Jesus in his sacrifice.
children of God, pray with me. Lord, Holy One, have mercy on us. We confess our sins to you. We've done it. We know we have fallen short of your glory, and without your mercy and grace, we know that we are merely dust. Now we repent. O oh Lord, as we enter this Lenten season, we pray that you would be near to us. Help us by your Holy Spirit to have the strength to overcome the temptations that stalk us to feel and know your will for us through these days of introspection, that we may perceive the stardust you have used to create us. We thank you, Lord, that Easter is coming. Death has no sting, no victory because of Jesus. Through Jesus, you rescue us and our Gratitude is immeasurable. We pray, O oh God, that you help us to keep both the weight and the joy of this season in our hearts as we move through the next several weeks. May we be faithful disciples that bear the good fruit of your spirit. We thank you for the invisible anointing on our forehead, for it symbolizes our faith, a reality, an assurance of something not seen, but is there. From dust we may have been formed, and our bodies may fail, but our spirits, ourselves, are a part of you. And we anticipate our redemption and restoration of all things through Jesus, our Savior. O oh God, through your Holy Spirit, help us to hear his call, to understand his word, to follow in his footsteps, and to share the love and joy he gives to us. For in his name we pray, Amen. Our scripture of blessing comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, beginning at verse 16. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. And may the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless in the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do this. Beloved, pray for us all. My friends, this is a night, a day of great blessing, and this is a season of great blessing. Go in peace, rejoicing in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with you today and all the days of your life. Amen.